In this lesson, we're going to be looking at some properties in solving equations, and we're also going to be looking at some special cases or solutions to equations. So first, please take a minute to set up your notebook and write down your essential question, and then you can restart the video and begin your notes. So the first um, word that I want us to look at, or vocabulary here, is like terms. Okay, we need to make sure we know what like terms are. Remember that in an equation or in an expression, here's just a simple example of an equation, each one of these is a term. 2x is a term, 8 is a term, 7 is a term. So that's the first thing that I want you to think about. Like terms, remember, are terms that have terms that have the same variable part, same variable part, and that includes exponents. And I'll explain and show you an example in just a second or they have no variable part. They're just a constant term, a constant number that um, we can put together. So make sure that you get that defin definition. Terms that have the same variable part, including, whoops, I misspelled exponents, holy cow, exponents. I'm actually a really good speller. Or no variable part. For example, here is just an expression. Remember, the difference between an equation and an expression is that an expression does not have an equal sign and we don't actually solve it, we just simplify it. So what I want to point out to you here is that we have some like terms. Some of them are, some of them aren't. We have 3x. 3x is a like term with negative 7x because they have the same variable part. Notice x squared doesn't go with it because it has an exponent of 2. So those are not included. So when I put 3x and negative 7x together, that makes negative 4x. And I'm stressing that sign here because that's important to pay attention to. Then I see next that I have negative 5. That's a constant term because it doesn't have a variable and positive 8 go together. So that makes positive 3. And then 2x squared actually does not have any like terms, and so we would just write it in. All we did there was simplify the expression. Um, that's not necessarily the order you would write it in, but it doesn't matter. It's still equivalent. The next vocabulary we need to talk about is our distributive property. You should be somewhat familiar with it. Remember that the distributive property says that you can distribute a term to a sum or difference. I love the distributive property. I, if it's possible to love a math property, this is the one I love. It's fun. We take the A and we distribute it to everything in parentheses. We multiply. Same thing here. The only difference is the adding and the subtracting. It's the same thing if we had numbers. Here's an example. I would say 2 times x, 2x, 2 times negative 3, negative 6. So the distributive property, that should be something you're familiar with. So when we look at these um, equation examples, the only thing we're adding from what we've previously learned is having to combine like terms and distribute. Um, I already mentioned to you, don't call me after midnight because I'll be asleep. And so this is going to help us make sure that we do everything in the um, right steps. Now I made a uh, mistake on problem number one. Let's change this to a C so we have all the same variable. And we're going to go through our steps. D, we're going to distribute. Well, there's no parentheses. There's nothing here that we need to distribute. So the next thing we need to look for is combining like terms. So if you look over here on the left, there's nothing to combine with that. But over here on the right, we have 7C minus 2C. 
So that's 5c minus 14. Now we're just down to a more basic equation. It makes it a lot easier. We want to then move our variables to the same side. I'm going to choose to move the 5c by subtracting it. That gives me 3c plus 1 equals negative 14. Then remember we add or subtract, so I'm going to say minus 1 because now my goal is to get the variable by itself. 3c equals negative 15. And then if I divide by 3, I get c equals negative 5. Okay. In the next example, we do have distributive property that's involved here. Now be really careful about this. The 5 is not involved in the distributing. So I'm going to write the 5 down. And what we're distributing here is a negative 7. So it's going to be negative 7t minus 7. Okay. Just writing the right because there's nothing over there. Now we need to look for like terms. So I want you to see we've got 5 and negative 7. So that makes negative 2 minus 7t. And now we're ready to move our variables to the same side. You don't always have to do their steps in this order, um, but this is just ways that I found is best. I'm going to choose to move the 7t by adding it. Okay, and then we're going to subtract 3, trying to get the variable by, its side, by itself. And we're going to divide by negative 3. Now, I, I don't want anyone to panic here. My solution is 5 thirds. And that is a perfectly acceptable answer. It is simplified. It is reduced in its lowest form. If you wanted to answer this as a mixed number, one and two thirds. That would be great too. I will suggest that maybe the decimal version is not the best way to answer because it's a repeating decimal and it's really hard to then use that repeating decimal. But I want you to learn to be comfortable with number one, an improper fraction, and also though recognizing the different ways that it can be stated. Okay, I want you to look at the you try problem, number three, and I want you to see if you can find a solution to that. Don't stress if you don't get it right, but try to use the two above examples and get work through that. Okay, so two more that I want to look at together are the special cases um, on this one. So in number four, again, you see some parentheses, so hopefully you realize we need to distribute. So this would be 3x minus 12, and then I have minus x, and then on the right, 2x minus 12. I then have some like terms over here on the left. 3x minus x is 2x. And my first question is, do you notice anything there? Hopefully you notice that they're exactly the same on both sides. If I happen to go a step further and move my variables, my variables are going to completely cancel out. And I have no variable left. I have nothing to solve for. Negative 12 is equal to negative 12. This is exactly the same. They are equal. This is a true statement. When you look at something and it's the same, we're thinking of our identity. That's your identity. So one way we could state our solution is identity, or what we're also saying is that this solution is all real numbers, which means I could take any real number and plug it into per x, and it would make the equation true. Because remember, we've talked about that a solution makes the equation true. So that's one special case. The second special case, okay, let's look at it. Let's go ahead and distribute. I'm going to be distributing a negative 2. And this is going to make positive 2x over here on the right. 6x minus 4. Okay, so now I've got some like terms. 
6x minus 2 equals 6x minus 4. I hope you're observing and maybe noticing some things there. If I try to move my variables to the same side, uh-oh, I have the same problem. They cancel out. But this time, I'm left with negative 2 equals negative 4. This isn't true. This is a false statement. Negative 2 is not equal to negative 4. And so what the, this tells us is that there is no solution. There is no value of x that we could plug in for the equation that would make both sides equal or make the equation true.